Hi Gary, thanks for letting us in. Appreciate the time. Um, welcome to uh, the United We Stream cooking segment of our uh, of our stream. Gary, just to start off with a couple of questions, um, just tell us a little bit about how this lockdown is affecting the business at the moment. Yeah, uh, the lockdown, well look, first thanks for having me, thanks for letting me be involved in this. It's something great to be involved in. Um, the lockdowns, uh, the impact's been huge. So all six restaurants are closed. Um, 150 people are not in work at the minute. You know, we're waiting the same as everybody else to find out what happens next and how it happens. So it's huge for us, absolutely huge. So tell us a little bit about how it's affecting you personally as well. Obviously you, you, you've worked really hard and now you've stopped. What, how's that, how are you dealing with that at the moment? Yeah, so personally, it's affected me probably the same as everyone else. You know, I have, I have good days with this and I have bad days, ups and downs, isn't it? Um, sometimes I feel really positive and I start thinking about the future and what it means when we reopen the restaurants. And then I have days where I just think, I just want to pack it all in because what's the point kind of thing. Um, ups and downs, the same as everyone. So. Yeah, just got to try and be as positive as possible. And that's why, you know, things like this are great. I know it's quite hard to probably focus on the back end of this, but have you got anything in your mind about what you want to do and what you're thinking about how we can get through this and, and, and what's your idea of what the, the industry is going to look like for you at the back end of it all? Yeah, I, you know, I'm constantly thinking about what's next and I'm constantly thinking about what it means, you know, if and when we reopen and, you know, what's the landscape of restaurants going to be like? Because is anyone going to want to go out? Is everyone going to be desperate to go out? Are people going to still be worried about social distancing? Is that going to last six months after? Will it last another two years? One of the things on my mind is people are going to learn how to cook. So, yeah, I'm a bit worried that um, no one will come to the restaurants. but. So many things. I think, you know, anybody, anybody with a business is going to be wondering what's next and how they, how they come out of this with six restaurants. We've got six, six things to think about how, how we get out of it. Um, that's, you know, that's why this is so important because people are going to be struggling. You know, this isn't, this isn't the end of it being in lockdown. The start of it is going to be when we come out of it. Financially, everyone's going to be screwed. So people are going to need support. That's why doing stuff like this is such a positive thing. So, so let, let me just ask you a little bit about that support. You have a, a lot of staff that work for you at the moment, and, and your, your employees and things like that. that. For you, that must be weighing heavy on your mind, on your heart at the moment, and how you're dealing with that at the moment? Yeah, this, so look, the... Um, the the most important thing to me about this whole, the whole, the whole catastrophe is the teams that and the people that I work with. Yeah, 150 is a lot of people. Responsibility is huge. I hope that I haven't let them down. Um, I'm not planning to, and you know we just keep going and hopefully stick by each other and get out of this together and. People that go through something really hard together, they end up getting stronger and tighter when they come out of it. So my feeling is we stick together in this, and this is the same for everyone really, isn't it? It's the same for Manchester, it's the same for individual places, but as a team, as a team of people in a restaurant, if we stick together through the hardest time, when we come out, we'll be ready to go. I mean, this is it, the teams are everywhere. It's quite interesting how we're all connected. Even our team here, the, the, yeah. the stream team that are working behind the scenes, you know, we're operating differently. It's a real tough time, but we are focusing and trying to be positive on, on the outcomes and what we can achieve as a great city. The Greater Manchester Combined Authority is full of yeah. fantastic people, isn't it? So, you know, coming out the back end of this is, is something that we can aim for. But this right now, unitedwestream.co.uk, so important, isn't it? And, and, and that, that kind of help for the people that need it. It's um, so important. It's so important, it's huge. All these things that are being done to help people, 
Not only is it important because it's going to solve it's a lot of problems, for me, it creates positivity because it's easy to get down at the minute, but you're seeing so many people like this getting together and that's just, that's good vibes. There's lots of people in Manchester that are getting together and, and doing something to make things better. So key message then to people, donate some money, get, get in your pockets if you can. Definitely, and definitely. Uh, you know, if you can put something in, put it in, donate. I mean, you know, we're all, we're all struggling at the minute, but we're not saying, no one's saying put a hundred quid in. If you can put a pound in, stick a pound in because obviously every pound counts and all this is going to be helping everybody that's suffering at the end of this. So that's enough of me talking all the depressing stuff. I want to know, because I'm getting hungry now, Gary, obviously. Yeah. So uh, tell us what you're going to do with this today and we'll just let you carry on. Yeah, okay, well look, uh, don't get too hungry because I, yeah, I'm a bit rusty with the old cooking. So we're going to do a couple of things, I hope. So I'm going to do a bit of gnocchi, potato gnocchi. I'm going to do a bit of rice pudding, going to do, might do a salad if we've got time and I don't end up blabbering on about everything else. Um, so ingredients wise, for gnocchi, you need a few potatoes, a little bit of flour and an egg. I, um, there was a few people mentioning yesterday on social media about being able to get hold of things. I, I, I know, I know it's difficult and flour is like one of the hardest things, but I picked up this flower in um, a polar shop yesterday, it's Romanian, I don't even know what it is, but it had three zeros on it, so I thought it might work out well, so we'll give it a crack. Um, yeah, I know it's that, the, like in the polar shops, in Chester at least, they were pretty stocked up with stuff, so it's worth having a look outside your, your normal supermarkets. Um, so yeah, look, I'm not going to, I'm not really going to like traditionally waste stuff out as well, I'll sort of go a little bit old school and just use um, just use some cups so I put uh, I put five potatoes in the oven uh, to be honest I put them in about two hours ago but they only need 45 minutes um, so five potatoes in the oven I call them red potatoes I don't know their names Desiree or something like that but the red looking potatoes are the better ones so four or five potatoes in the oven uh, a cup of flour and an egg Important thing with gnocchi is the heat. So you need, you really need the potatoes when they come out of the oven to go straight into the mix and to not sit around getting, getting cold. So this is a bit of a fancier contraption. It's a, a rice or a moolie or, or, or whatever they're called. But um, you, uh, a masher, potato masher would be fine. You don't have to be too anal about having the right stuff. So cut the, cut the spuds in half. So these have been in the oven for, should be in the oven for 45 minutes about. Um, and 45 minutes and you're scooping them out when they're hot. Have the oven on uh, about, about 190. So use a cloth if the, uh, to hold the potato if the potato is too hot. Scoop out the mix in there. I said 45 minutes, but it's the same with a lot of uh, questions for, for how long something takes with, um, with cooking, because the answer is really when it's, for when it's cooked. I know that sounds like a basic answer, but I said 45 minutes for the potatoes, but if the potatoes feel a little bit, still feel a little bit hard after 45 minutes, give them another 15 minutes. So just until they're nice and soft in the middle. So you're scooping out the flesh. I'll whiz it around this, but you would, you can use your, your old school masher. So speed is uh, speed is important right now. So it's 
quick as you can. Get that potato that you've, that you've, uh, that you've mashed. Dry your potato. Put your, add your flour first, your cup of flour. Give that a little mix. You can use, if you haven't got one of these, you can use a knife. Anything will do really. Give it a little, give it a quick little mix. The only other ingredient now, a little bit of salt as well. The only other ingredient now is, um, is the egg. I don't add the egg straight away because the, it'll just cook. It'll, it'll, it'll go lumpy in the potato because the potato will be hot. The egg yolk will go into it and it will just cook straight away. So add the flour a little bit first. Once that's mixed up a little bit, take your egg. You can chuck the whole egg in. You know, people say uh, if when they use yolks and they just use the yolk and they don't use the white, they say, um, they say, yeah, put the white in your fridge and you can use that for meringue, but no one does that, do they? So if I was you, I would just throw the whole egg in. For me now, I'm gonna, I'm, I want it to be right, and so I'm just gonna put the yolk in. But definitely, you can just throw the whole egg in there. Same when we do the rice pudding afterwards, it calls for yolks, just throw the white in there as well. Unless you really are gonna make some sort of meringue or something, but I don't believe anyone that does that. So you've added the, added the egg. So, I quite like using a knife just to cut through it all bring it together. Don't really want to use your hands at the minute because you sort of, you warm the mix up and it goes, ends up going a bit, uh, a bit clumpy and claggy. Bring it together. Bit of flour. Last little, last little mix. Leo, who got these knives for me, is going to be absolutely uh, cringing watching me chop on surfaces now. So bring that together as little with your with your hands as possible. So so you're kind of looking for a little bit of a dough, if you like. Don't mix it too much. Then you definitely, you definitely don't need to use a piping bag for this, but I've got one, so I will. You can just roll it out. All you're looking for is, you're looking for like, you're looking for sausages kind of thing. You're looking for like a, a similar sort of vibe of sausages. So I like to use a piping bag, because we haven't. Um, you definitely don't need to. Little trick when you put something like this in a piping bag, drop it in there, and then you want to get all the air out the bottom there. So just give it, give it one of those. Important now that you don't leave this in in the bag too long, so it'll sweat. We're going to do the gnocchi with uh, with uh, some peas. So any old uh, frozen peas is fine. You don't need fresh peas. Uh, stick them into hot water. Boiling water with some uh, with a load of salt, loads of salt. Salt, not just seasoning, but keep them keep them green as well. Lob them in there. Let that boil now. Back to the gnocchi. So get a bit of flour on your bench or your tray or what, whatever you're gonna whatever you're gonna roll it on. Make a little cut in the bag. bit of a roll now. I 
I've got a pan of water over on the side there waiting for, waiting to cook these gnocchis for the second time. The, the pan is like, I just want it just tickling over a little bit. If it's, a, if, it's a, if it's on a rolling boil, when you drop the knockies, they'll just, they'll just fall apart. Um, obviously, you don't want that. You just want it just, just ticking. So the gnocchi, I've rolled it out into a sausage sort of thing. And then I just run my, run my hand just gently over the top of it. And what that does is it kind of creates two sides now. So the one underneath and the one on top is going to be flat. So because what I want to do with these knockies is I want to fry them. I don't want to just boil them. I want to, um, I want to fry them so they get nice, crispy little sides on them. So, ready to cut them now. Get something that you don't mind flouring up so you can drop into the, into the water. And then just One of them, give them a little, give them a little squeeze, and then they end up looking like little, little pillows, little fluffy potato, cloudy pillow things. So give it, give it one of them little squeeze on the side, just makes it look nice. Line them up on whatever you're gonna use to throw into the water. Over to water, see it's got a nice little, uh, nice little tipple going on there. Not boiling, just a little bit. Look at my peas now as well. So, uh, pea puree, that sounds so stupid, doesn't it? Pea puree, but look, blending up peas so that they're smooth is quite nice for dishes. So people ask, like, when, when is the pea ready? So check the, check the pea, and the way to, the way to check it is not to, not to not to try it and not to not to just give it a squeeze but to squeeze it and see the skin the skin there if this if the skin starts to disintegrate then it's ready to blend because the thing is when you blend particularly in kitchens we get a bit anal with stuff we want everything to be ridiculously smooth for some reason we either want everything to be ridiculously smooth or round i don't know why we like that but um but smooth is nice so uh that's what you're looking for. It's the bits of the skin in the peas that will end up making it, uh, that'll end up making your, your puree or whatever you can do, or your soup even, make the gravy. So look for that skin, look for that skin sort of disintegrating in your, in your hands, and that's, that's when your peas are ready to, uh, to come out and blend. So back to my gnocchi, turn it down a little bit, don't want that rolling boil, little tickle, in goes the gnocchi. So when's the, when's the gnocchi ready? The gnocchi is ready when it floats to the top. So uh, I'm a bit nervous to be honest because it probably won't float to the top now. Um, bit of oil in a tray. Gnocchi's all sat on the bottom. Hopefully it's going to come up to the top. It will normally take about a minute, um, a minute, 90 seconds or something. Give it a little gentle uh, tap, maybe, maybe ask it nicely as well uh, to come up to the top. And your pea puree as well. Let's have a, let's have a little look at these. Let's have a look at these peas. So they're boiling away there in just salted water. Looking at the skin. No, still not yet. So Minoki, give it a little tap. I'm praying that it comes up when it's being filled live. We'll just scoop it off the bottom. Come on, come on Minoki. Come on, come on. So this would be a good uh, time to ask you a quick question then, wouldn't it, whilst we're waiting for that knocky to come up? Yeah. So let me just go to the questions. We had some questions come in. I'll ask you a quick one. Yeah. If I forget to, just bear with me a second. Uh, okay, what is, 
Uh, this is from uh, Ciotta85. I don't know who that is. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, what's the tastiest cut of steak? What's the tastiest cut of steak? Well, there's no answer to that because it's personal preference. Um, yeah, because look, ribeye's lovely. It's got fat in it and stuff. Uh, bit of a chew on it. Yeah, fillets, fillet, fillet and chateaubriand. And it's lovely because it's got, it's got nothing nothing in it other than just lovely tender meat. Sirloin's good for some people. I, it's personal preference. It depends what you want. That's a rubbish answer, isn't it? I, for me, I like a ribeye. Noki's come up. Yes. So, when the Noki comes up, give it, give it 30 seconds or a minute, or as how brave you are. Just let it, let it cook in there a little bit. Um, and then you don't refresh these. So with a lot of things that you cook and you want to keep them nice, you go straight into ice water. As much as I can, I try not to do that with anything because I hate refreshing stuff. I just don't know. Dumping something into a load of cold water just doesn't sound very nice. Uh, and you definitely don't need to with knock you. So look, it's all come up now. I feel very happy that that's come up. Grab your tray. Stick your knockies into your olive oil. Listen, the oil that you use is, is how it's going to taste. So if you use a lovely, like, extra virgin olive oil, that's how it's going to taste afterwards. You can use veg oil, that's fine, but you won't really taste much when you cook it. Because what we're going to do with these is we're going to fry them. And we'll fry them in that olive oil. So, uh, right, what am I doing? Right, pe peas next. So, peas, let's have a look. I probably don't need to check these because they've been in their ages, so they'll probably be ready anyway. So, let's have a look. Yeah, so the skin is starting to disintegrate now. So, if I was going to be really anal, and I, or if we were in a restaurant, then I could put this in one of these super blenders that we have in these restaurants, like, you know, just crazy, crazy powerful. And you blend it for, what? You blend certain stuff for 10 minutes. Beetroot puree, for example, you blend it for half an hour if you want it. It's getting super smooth. Um, but we're cooking at home, and so we're not gonna bother with that. I'm gonna blend them, but we're just gonna use this. So uh, you can get these like there in Argos for a fiver. So um, blending stuff can, you know, can't be done without buying one of these thousand pound machines. That's what these, uh, these crazy machines cost. So, um, right, so let's take a few of the peas out. And when you're doing anything like green, like peas or when you're doing broccoli, that water's lovely because all it tastes of is whatever you've uh, is whatever you've whatever you've cooked in it. So always keep the water until you're definitely sure that you don't need it anymore. Because I'm going to blend this and I'm going to need a little bit of water to to uh, for it to blend. And the worst thing I can do now is just add add any water. The best thing I could do is add some of the water that I've just cooked the peas. So a bit of water. Let's give it some more peas. The, the, the um, important thing with these, with blending, with these, with these, um, with these thick blenders is, uh, it's a suitable receptacle. So I've used the head chef's um, uh, uh, bodybuilding milkshake thing, but but it is actually perfect for it because the, the thing that you need is you need like tall and small, so it all blends together without. It's about anything in a big pan. I'd be chasing it around the pan. Whereas in this, perfect. So, you can put all sorts of stuff in here, like classic with peas as mint. Um, anything you want, really. I don't like any of that, I just like keeping stuff as they are. Add a little bit more of the cooking juice. And that's it. So look, I could. Um, 
um, I could I could blend this for so long now, trying to get it immaculately smooth, but I'm not bothered about that, and you shouldn't be bothered about that at home as well. Um, so, we've got the gnocchi now, we're going to fry it. So, you do need a non-stick pan for this. Um, I turned up this morning and saw this thing, which is a battered old, battered old pan that I'm not sure it's going to work right, but we'll give it a go. So, best thing is a non-stick pan, like a uh, one that non-stick actually works on it. You shouldn't need, you shouldn't need any, um, you shouldn't need any oil if you've got a good non-stick pan, because these are covered oil. So you should just be able to take one of these, pop it in the non-stick pan, and the, um, and the oil will cook it. But I don't trust this pan, so I've put a little bit of oil in it. So I'll have a little quick, uh, any more oil for that. Let's do it, let's do it, yeah. Um, okay, so we've got one coming on Twitter um, from Tom Clark. He says, oh, uh, has God. Gary learned how to snowboard faster than a snail yet? Uh, how did I know that was coming? Yeah, so look, me and so Tom, me and Tom used to work together. So Tom's, uh, Tom is a, uh, is a chef, we work together. And, um, and I started snowboarding a couple of years ago and I'm rubbish. And he's very good and we go out together and we go, um, we go to uh, the one here in Manchester, and uh, yeah, and I'm rubbish, and he likes to remind me that I am rubbish. So I'm gonna remind Tom something. Tom and I were working in here one day, and he was sending me up a risotto, and he kept sending it up to me, and I kept saying, Tom, it's sweet, mate, it's really sweet. And he was saying, I, 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 I don't know what's going on. And I was, I was here, and he was cooking here. I was saying, Tom, mate, it's sweet. And he gave it up to me. Try it again. I said, mate, it's still sweet. Try it. Added some more seasoning back. I said, Tom, it's sweet. It, it's getting sweeter. I said, what is that pot next to your pan there? And we found out that it was sugar. So, uh, yeah, I am slow on the snowboard, but um, I know my salt and my sugar. Also, Tom, when are we going snowboarding again? We haven't been for a few months. Right, so, uh, Noki, let's fry this Noki. So, that's too hot. So, uh, let's do it anyway, hey? So, So, let's grab a plate, what are we doing it with? Let's do, let's do that So, your, your pea puree, whatever you want to call it, into the plate. Give it a little tickle. These gnocchi should take, on the right heat, which that wasn't, on the right heat they'll take, just to fry them nicely, they'll take about eight minutes, because all you're doing is cooking them, cook them slowly, and you're just slowly caramelizing the bottom. So what else have we got? So I found some, I found some cheese in the polar shop as well. I'm not sure, I think it's like a cottage cheese or something got some pesto, we've got some sticky walnuts, which are walnuts caramelized in sugar. Let's turn this back on now. You don't cook slowly. So, uh, right, what are we doing? So, this cottage cheese looking thing. So when I add a couple of these sticky walnuts, 
which I'm going to show you how to make because we're going to use them for the um, we're going to use them on the rice pudding as well. I think we use them in the salad too. So there's your nuts. A bit of this to check those. A bit of this cheese. Obviously you don't have to mess around like this trying to make it look trying to make it look nice. Some put some peas on some of the peas that you cooked. So I've got some here. So just save some of the ones that you that you uh, that you blanched for the puree. What else have we got? We've got the gnocchi, we've got some pesto, and that's it, isn't it? So look, the pesto, any old pesto. This is it, add your, add your gnocchi to it, and that's pretty much it. I've tried to, tried to do a couple of dishes, you know, that are pretty simple to do, but also don't, that, that the ingredients are easy to get. So your, um, obviously frozen peas, pretty easy to get hold of. Um, uh, like any cheese would have worked with this. You could have done, you could have done blue cheese. You could have done, yeah, like anything would have worked. Goat cheese, blue cheese, any soft cheese, anything would have worked. So uh, that was my sort of uh, train of thought with it for for, for the dish that I wanted to do. Um. A bit concerned that I might have made it look a little bit fancy, too fancy for the, for. Um, for cooking at home, but I don't know. I think it was quite easy. I mean, you see, the pea puree I blended in a in a in a protein beaker, and then I poured it on the plate. It was it's pretty it actually pretty it's pretty simple to do, um, and it and that's it. Can you can you see that? Do you want me to bring it around to should I bring it around to here? Um, so yeah, so gnocchi and uh, peas and things. So, right, so uh, what's next? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, where should I, to here? Yeah, to there. Okay, so next let's do, uh, let's do rice pudding next. So, look, I, I, um, I call Rich the exec chef of Elite Bistro. I call him for absolutely everything to do with food. And, um, and I was in a petrol station last night and, uh, and I was going, doing things, uh, 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 charity things, not, I'm not just out and about, whatever. And I stopped in petrol station and I saw this, um, and I saw this, I saw this rice pudding. And I thought, it'd be, it'd be really cool if I could just do something with this. And I, and I called Rich and I said, Rich, I said, I said, what's rice pudding in a tin? Because I've never had it. <laughs> I don't know, it sounded like some, like, that I'm just not knowing what's going on but I've never had it and I said to him what is it and he said well, it's just rice pudding I said is it nice and he said well my wife loves it and I said okay what do you do with it he said you just heat it up and so I bought some I bought some last night bought a couple of tins and I heated it up and I thought you know what I can show you something with a tin of rice pudding or we can just make rice pudding so uh, we're gonna make rice pudding so um, and I tried it it's not for me that one, um, but you can use this for this uh, for what we're doing. So rice pudding, uh, we're doing. We're not. We're not really measuring how we're doing capsicum. So rice pudding, 
Um, we're doing uh, one of these double creams that you can get in the supermarket. So one of these, and get all that in there, dump that in. And then, um, and then we, let's use the cups again. So uh, two cups of milk. There's one. Let's do another one. I think to do this, you would need about a litre of milk. But you start it off just with that. So turn that on. Bring that up to the... Uh, Bring that up to the boil. Um, right, so I've also, ne I'm, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sound like such a snob. I've never used, um, I've never used extract either. I've only ever used vanilla pods, but only because I just don't cook at home. So the only reason I've ever used vanilla pods is because that's what you use in restaurants. So, uh, so I've got this, this vanilla stuff. So you'll probably know better than I will about how much of this you use. So uh, one cap, I don't know, two caps, I don't know. So vanilla in there, you could put cinnamon in there or something like that, probably be nicer. We haven't got any here. So uh, vanilla in there, milk and cream, and, and just bring it up to the boil. So we are talking about cups, aren't we? So we've got some rice. Ah, oh, yeah, that was the other thing as well. So I was talking to Rich about risotto, uh, about rice pudding, and I said, um, and I said to him, and we were talking about it, and he said it was lovely, and I tried, and then I tried it, and I, I wasn't into it. We started talking about rice pudding, and I said to Rich, I said, well, yeah, well, what about pudding rice? Maybe that's difficult to get hold of. And he said, just use risotto rice. So, um, so, so I will. So risotto rice, so let's stick a cup in of risotto rice. Um, and he said he's done it with risotto rice before, and it came out fine, and it got me thinking. That I feel like I, I, I need to make a confession to everyone. Because um, about, must have been about 15 years ago, I was working in a restaurant, a very, very good restaurant as well. And um, I hope that none of my old bosses are watching this because they might know uh, which one it is. So um, we, were, we, were, we were in the middle of service in this restaurant and I was essentially running the kitchen that, that, that night, and, um, and oh look, milk and cream's up to the board ready. So dump in your dump in your risotto rice or pudding rice if you if you're lucky enough to have pudding rice. Uh, then turn it down. This is probably going to take about it'll probably take about half an hour, I think. Um, so uh, yeah, so look, so we're in. I was in this restaurant, and I was I was running a pass. And the thing is, when you're running, when you're running the pass, whether you're the head chef, the sous chef, or the junior sous chef, you're responsible for everything that comes up. So you're responsible for every section. So what you send, um, you are the final person. So if something's wrong from the pastry section, it doesn't matter that pastry got it wrong. You're the you're the one that's sending it. You're the final person. You're the one in charge. You're the one responsible. And um, I remember I was running the kitchen and. Um, and the, um, and the pastry chef came up to me and he told me that he'd run out of uh, rice pudding. And he hadn't just run out of rice pudding, he'd run out of the, he didn't have any, any of the rice either. But he had checks on for rice pudding. And uh, I felt that, I felt like I'm gonna get this is my responsibility, and I, he's only telling me now, but I should have known this already, so I should have sorted this out. So, uh, so I knew that we had risotto on, but all the risotto had been made into uh, a mix of something. So, uh, so I washed the risotto rice, and we then used that as, uh, as rice pudding, and I, I felt guilty for it for so long. I feel so good to get it off my chest. So I kind of, when Rich told me that he'd used risotto rice before, he just meant he'd used raw risotto rice. And then it made me remember, I've actually used cooked risotto rice before for rice pudding. So yeah, not one of my, uh, not one of my best moments. Right, so uh, look, so rice pudding is in the milk and cream and the vanilla. 
and it's just um, it's just going to tick away now. Now you um, you need to look after it, so you just need to stir it every now and again. But what you'll also need to do is add more milk. So just let it tick, let it like absorb all that what's in there, and then just keep adding milk. Like I said, we put two cups of milk in at the start, and you'll probably end up using about a litre for one cup of rice. So let's do um, let's do the bananas for it. So um, a couple of bananas, or as many bananas as you want. Um, Take this uh, little end bit off, take it off both sides because you can't cut through it. Um, cut it in half, uh, then cut it like lengthways, then same again on the end. Uh, stick it on something like something something metal if you've got a blowtorch that is, um, and, uh, and if you haven't got a blowtorch then then we couldn't be friends anyway. Um, but this will work under the grill. I think I've never tried it, but I'm guessing if you put sugar on something and then put it under the grill, it'll caramelise. So uh, I'm going to do it with a blowtorch. You should do it with a blowtorch if you have one. If you haven't, just put it under the grill. So look, uh, put some um, sugar on it. I've got like demerara or something here, but any sugar would work. Caster sugar would work. Uh, light brown sugar would work. Any icing sugar would work. Any sugar would work. But I've got this, so we're using it. Uh, cover the cover the banana, the fleshy bit. Let that sit for ten seconds. Just so that the um, the so that the sugar sort of uh, sticks to the banana. Then empty the empty the excess off. So just give it one of them, and then it's what stays left on the banana that is the bit that you want to caramelise. So uh, yeah, that's it. So caramelise it, but leave it leave it in the um, leave it in the leave it in the skin. very satisfying about loads of things, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is. So uh, look, can you see now this rice pudding is, it's okay, it's at the point where it might need a little bit more milk uh, in another minute or so. It's not, it's not sticking, it shouldn't stick either, um, but it is coming to the point now where I would, where I would add more milk. There's no, there's no, um, there's no there's no way to know uh, when rice pudding is um, is cooked other than trying it. So you'll probably have to try it about five or six times um, to know that it's cooked. And it's like I said to you before with the potato, um, there's, there's no set time, it's cooked when it's cooked. So you need to try it. So you give it, give it, give it one of these. I know it's not ready now, but give me one of those. Um, rice is hard, carries on. So um, you'll need to keep doing that, but a rough guide for that amount would be about half an hour for it. So 
really you want to be checking it when you put milk in it another four times and it's been on for about 25 minutes already. So these bananas, which we're going to garnish the um, rice pudding with, just peel them now and you get a nice little, um, I don't know, it just looks nice, doesn't it? Um, it's nice and sharp on the edges where the caramel is. I like that. Um, Once your banana's ready, they're going to sit on the top. The other thing that we are, the other thing we're going to do is, I thought that we'll use, we'll use like um, fruit that's in, like any dried fruit that you have. I found um, Jack, the head chef, had some um, raisins in the dry store, so I thought we'd do it with raisins. So just get, a, get, your, get your raisins. Or, yeah. or it could be dried apricots, it could be mustard fruit, it could be anything. So any, any dried fruit, dried cranberries, anything. Um, so a couple of raisins and some, and some booze. I, I found this in Jack's dry store as well. I'm not quite sure why Jack's got this, but, but we'll use this. So a um, bit of booze. Again, the booze aspect, it could be anything. Whiskey, rum, like anything, any, any, whatever you want, it's your rice pudding. So uh, either just heat them up on, on really gently, really slowly, or just do what I do, because I'm lazy, is I just lock them in the oven. So I just lock them in the oven for three or four minutes. Um, all you're doing is you're just, you're just letting the booze get into the fruit. Obviously, the longer that that fruit sits in that booze, the boozier and lovelier the fruit becomes. But also, it will be fine after three or four minutes as well. It will still taste really nice and strong. So my rice pudding now, I've added more milk and it's just cooking away there. So let's do... Let's move some of this first. Let's do let's do the salad. So um, right, we're gonna do a beetroot salad. So. Beetroot salad. We're going to put sticky walnuts. I've used all the ones I had, so we need a bit of sugar, and we need some. We need some nuts. Have I got any? No. Thought I had some. Not yet. So walnuts, but any nut will do. So we're going to make some praline. So praline is any nut caramelised with sugar. We're going to do walnut prali, um, sticky walnuts, which we've put on the gnocchi, did we? Yeah, we put on the gnocchi, we're going to put on the rice pudding, and we're going to put on the peach root salad as well, just so you, just so you're like sticky walnut in the, in the mind about everything. So, um, sticky walnuts, caramel, lots of information about caramels. Um, I just put some sugar in a hot pan and uh, without any water, no butter, no nothing like that, just some sugar. And um, once the sugar's turned to caramel, throw your nuts in, toss, toss, out. So let's have a bit of mold and salt as well. So in with a bit of sugar. Checking my rice pudding. It's nice, it's not sticking or anything like that. It doesn't matter if it does stick, but it isn't. Keeping an eye on it. Sugar in there. 
wait for that to turn to caramel, and then I'm, and then the nuts are going to go in, toss, toss, and out. And we'll also do some seeds to go with it as well. So, um, pumpkin seeds. Got some somewhere. So again, you get lazy with this. Get your seeds. Love them in the oven. They'll take about. Uh, seeds will take about 10 minutes, so caramel, nuts, little toss, can you see that? Out onto a tray, a bit of salt. out so they're gonna be lovely so uh, seeds in there 10 minutes or seven let's try seven let's get rid of that pan so it doesn't look like I burnt the caramel right so uh, beetroot salad so we're gonna do beetroot salad now while we wait for that um, while we wait for that rice pudding. So beetroot salad. Again, beetroot is something that has, uh, when I've been in the shops, it's been loads of beetroot, like loads of other stuff has gone missed because it was being, it's being bought out. Um, but beetroot seems to be everywhere. So I, um, so I got some beetroots, but I, I, I couldn't be asked uh, cooking them and peeling them, so I just got cooked ones. So, uh, Gloves, essential gloves, always for beetroot. So beetroot there. I got some of this as well. Any old cheese for this salad. Like I said before, with that salad, or with that gnocchi, you can use you can use any cheese. So um, take your beetroots. Take a couple out. Like you can be snobby about the. Uh, buying cooked beetroots, but if you want a quick salad, these are good. If you are going to cook the beetroots, they're so easy to cook. Uh, they just take a long time, that's all. They, they, normally take, they normally take a couple of hours for beetroots. I just throw them in a tray in the oven with nothing and just let them roast like that. Um, you, can do, you can throw them in a pan, you can boil them. You can put them in the oven with um, with um, with foil and a bit of water, you can semi sort of uh, roast and steam. It's all sort of, you, but, but they're quite robust. So you can just basically cook them any way you like. So um, right, so that part. So let's get let's get rid of that because I'm done with it. Let's take these off. Right, so beetroot. So salt, super important. Did have some. Salt with the beetroots, loads of salt, loads of salt. Uh, a bit of olive oil. And some vinegar as well. Grab some vinegar. Okay, we time for another question, I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we've got one in from Laura Peacock in Cheshire. Okay, yeah. Uh, she said, I've become borderline obsessed with, with the making of toasted sandwiches oh. on the George Foreman grill. Please save me from being so basic and give me a chefy idea to set me free from this lame ham and cheese. <sighs> Any ideas? In a toasty, what works about the toasty? Okay. Uh, um, right. OK, 
okay, look, breads, it's hard getting bread at the minute. It's hard getting, like, sliced bread seems to be selling out everywhere. But one thing I've noticed is everywhere is bagels. It's bagels everywhere. So um, have a bagel. And uh, one thing I did yesterday was I, I took a sausage, I took the skin off, put it a bit of a pat down so it looked like a patty, fried that in a pan. It took, like, a minute either side, fried an egg, I got some red onion chutney, toasted a bagel, red onion, a, a sausage that's like a McDonald's uh, patty end up, and then a fried egg bagel, lovely. So, um, right, there's no vinegar. So we're gonna improvise, and, and I'll text Jack later and ask him why there's no vinegar here. But there's no vinegar, so we're gonna use, we found some capers, so let's use some, uh, let's use some, in fact, let's put some capers in there as well, it'll be lovely. So, um, the vinegar is nice with the beetroots, um, but so is that. So, give that a nice mix. I don't know if you can see all this, I don't know where the camera angles are, I'm not sure which one can you see that. So, lovely beetroots in there, let's put some, um, let's put some uh, green stuff in. I'm, look, I might, I'm gonna look like, I've got access to all this lovely, like, fresh herbs and things like that. This was in the polar shop as well. They had loads of it. They had loads of parsley. Um, so just really rough like that. Get it in, the, in with your beetroots there. Give it a little trickle in the pan, get everything working together. So you don't need to season the parsley because all your juice in the pan and your salt and everything, season it. Um, so, uh, right, so yeah, just bung that on the plate. And then, uh, what else did we say? Oh shit, the uh, seeds, yeah. So, oh, look at that timing. So, get it nice, all plumped up. So, um, uh, ah, I forgot about this. So, let's put a little bit of um, this smoked paprika, because it's lovely. I can't put it in everything. Let's put a little bit of that on the seeds. Uh, Give it a little one of them. Stick it back in the oven, let that paprika cook a little bit. Just give that a minute, you don't want to burn that paprika, it'd be awful. So, uh, uh, cheese. Oh, walnuts, sticky walnuts. Can't forget them, can I? So, uh, right, this borsan, you can get this anywhere. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it, it's such a like, um, what's the word? Oh, it's it's a bit tacky because it just tastes of garlic really, but it's cheesy and it's garlicky and and so so yeah. So why not? Um, but they sell it literally anywhere. Well, in any sort of in any supermarket they sell it. In most little shops they sell it as well. It's just it's it's so easily available. So um, bit of cheese, whatever you want. Quite strong, it's quite garlicky, so check in my rice pudding. So I'm gonna try it now, um, the rice pudding. It's a good time to try it, just in a spin then. Um, yeah, it's nearly there. So um, I don't wanna add any more milk now, because I like the way it's cooked. And if I add more milk now, I'll have to wait another five minutes for the milk to sort of absorb in it. So I'm happy just to leave that now and just let that, just keep it like that. I'll have to keep an eye on it though, because it'll stick really easily. Um, uh, seeds. 
nuts, sticky walnuts. Couple of nuts. Looks nice that. Rustic. Hey. Eh? Rustic. Rustic. So uh, okay. That's done now. This is good timing. So that's done. Um, uh, yeah. Seeds. Otherwise that be putting me off. So couple of seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, whatever you want to um, whatever you want to use. A little bit more of your olive oil. Let's have table salt instead. Okay, so one of them. So seeds, lovely seeds. Nice, looks nice. Nice, plastic salad, nice. And then, um, right, uh, rice pudding. So, um, right. Uh, an egg and sugar, right? So what you need to do is, uh, best thing you can do, but I'm gonna wing it and just add it. The best thing you can do now is, uh, is have an egg and um, sugar mix uh, whisked in together. So get one egg, use the whites if you want, and, um, and, and mix it in with your sugar. So we said cups, didn't we? So let's do a, let's do a cup of sugar. Got a cup somewhere. At least I did have a cup somewhere. Okay, hang on. Okay, so a cup of sugar. Ish. In there. Mix all that in. God, it looks good, it looks really good. Um, serving wise, I don't really want to tell you how many this is for because I honestly think I could nail all of that myself. Um, but it could probably do four people as well, four non unique people. So, again, egg, um, look, you, you stick the whole leg in. Uh, but I'm just going to put the yolk in. Classically, yeah, just the yolk. Um, but it wouldn't make a difference if you put the hot, if you put the white in as well, because you, you're not going to be at this now that you've added the egg and the sugar to the rice pudding. It's not going back on the heat, so it wouldn't matter if you put the egg white in there. Like I said, there's people that say that they that they save their egg whites and then use them for meringues. They're, they're lying anyway. So stick the whole stick the whole egg in your in your rice pudding. Um, so what, what we have? Them. So sugar in the rice pudding, egg in the rice pudding. That's in there. Loads of it. Uh, yeah, uh, the the, um, the raisins that we soaked in booze, whiskey, I think it was. So, a couple of raisins, uh, bananas, some more raisins, a bit of the juice. Juice, the whiskey, a bit of the whiskey. Just tell you what, let's just pour it on. I don't know. Oh, whiskey. Oh. Uh, sticky walnuts, sticky walnuts, everyone. Sticky walnut, sticky walnut in the dessert. Yeah. 
sticky walnut, everyone? Yeah. And that's it. So rice pudding and, um, and caramelized bananas, um, uh, boozy fruit and sticky walnuts. And we're done. And that's it. Oh, that was stressful. Well, that looks absolutely fantastic. And we can't wait to get our uh, knives and forks out and to get stuck into that. Yeah, good. Unfortunately, the people at home aren't going to be able to. Yes. Um, but listen, just we want people to donate, don't we? Um, website, uh, United you, We Stream. Yeah. Um, and let's just let's just go back and, and just reinfer that message. You know, why is it important for people to donate what they can? Yeah, it's so important because it's so important for people to donate to this cause and to donate to, to all these places that are building these. I don't want to call them charities because it sounds like. Um, it, it's support for people that are going to be struggling really bad. Um, like I said, this getting through this now is not the beginning. The beginning is when businesses start to start running again. They get open again. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be so difficult. There's so many people out there with so many difficult challenges ahead. So if you can support this and you can donate, then hopefully we can help all these people that are going to be struggling pretty hard in... in a month or two's time. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, very kind of, uh, of you to let us in here today um, uh, to, to do this, and I'm sure the whole of Manchester uh, thanks you very much for this for this uh, little little lesson as well. I think there's some great things to learn. To oh, learn it's there. a pleasure. So Look, you. I just want to say as well, this like uh, <laughs> I was washing my hands before, and I am practicing all the safe practices everywhere please ignore <laughs> ignore the mess that i've made here this is just me showing you how to cook that's all Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure everybody take care and please donate what you can definitely